All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Kevin Nanke here for Esports Weekly with Coca-Cola, and today we have a very special interview. We're joined by Gordon Hayward from the Utah Jazz. Uh, Gordon, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing just fine. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. Well, glad to have you. And uh, it was about four years ago, almost exactly, that I believe you signed your soul over to an exclusive deal with the IGM Pro League and became a professional esports gamer. How has that career been working out for you? <laughs> well, uh, I think I had a good run there in my first tournament and uh, definitely a lot of fun, but it, it seems like time has flown by. It's already five years since then, so uh, time flies. How did you get involved in esports? What is it that appealed to you ultimately about it? Yeah, so I, I think I got involved in the esports um, kind of naturally just being a competitive person. I was always into video games. It was something that I did for fun, you know, in my free time growing up. Um, you know, I started with uh, regular Nintendo and kind of just as, you know, video games and technology grew up, so did I. And um, I was really intrigued to Halo when I was in uh, high school and, you know, some buddies and, and me, we went to some tournaments and that's kind of how I started into the esports scene. Um, and just kind of then once I got to, through college, kind of went to the StarCraft and after that and um, League of Legends and, and now I'm just kind of involved in, in all of it. And I love the competitive side of it and um, it, it's pretty cool the production that, that you know all these games have with the commentators. And to me, it really is like watching a sport. I mean, it's, it's uh, pretty incredible what they can do now. You've said in the past that the skills that transfer over from traditional sports to, uh, to, to pro gaming are communication especially, being able to work with your team. Do you think though that it is as difficult to become a very top level esports pro like an LCS contender as it is to make it into the world of professional athletics conventionally? Yeah, I think it's uh, pretty much the same. I mean, it's one of those things where you have all these people trying to be professional athletes and, you know, when they tell you growing up, you know, a certain amount that are going to play, you need to make sure you stay in school and, um, you know, all that stuff. And I think it's the same thing for video games. There, are, there might even be more people now today that play video games. Um, and there's only a certain amount that get a chance to be an, on an LCS team and be up there on stage. And um, it's it's very difficult, I think, just because of the amount of players playing, uh, the competitive nature of it. Like I said earlier, just the, the fact that you can get relegated and kicked off, you know, after one season or whatever. There's always people trying to take your job, and it's the same thing again. There's 60 people drafted each year, and uh, it's very competitive. So I think you know similarities right there are, are two obvious ones. Do you think that there's anything that sports do that esports should be doing right now? Um, I think I think one thing that kind of sticks out to me as a difference right now is kind of like a um, like franchising systems. Like you know, I play for the Utah Jazz, and the Utah Jazz have been around for you know my whole life. And every like you have different teams. Uh, uh, Chicago Bulls, same thing with football. Every, everybody kind of, they have these leagues, but then they have these franchises that are there um, and that have been there. And that kind of gives people, um, you know, a team to root for their whole life. This is what I watched growing up. This is, you know, these are the players that were there back then, um, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that's something that, that esports doesn't necessarily have right now. And that's probably just the nature of how esports works, um, giving everybody a chance to come up and play and win and compete. Um, but I think, you know, that might be the next step as, as the games um, and as teams, they kind of have it right now. You've got different teams, C9, EG, um, you know, TSM. With, with, they have teams in, in different games across, across the board. Um, but I think when you start to see kind of teams are fixed, this is a team that you know and you root for. And when there's a new game that comes around, this team's going to be there. Um, that'll it'll start to catch up and um, kind of be more similar to real, you know, traditional sports.